Hello, I'm Jesse, and you can't see me. I'm hiding. Everything they've talked about before has been using what's called the background layer. The Game Boy has another layer, called the window. Let's have a closer look. <clears throat> that is the window layer, and this is the background layer. The window layer is a lot like the background. They're both made up of tiles. They both use a tile map that's 32 by 32 tiles big. They're both affected by the same palette, and they can both be moved around. Let's have a closer look at how the background and window move together. I'll start with the full 256 by 256 background. In the last video, we saw how it can scroll, and we saw how it loops around. The Game Boy only shows 160 by 144 of that, and scrolling changes what part of the background is shown. You can think about it as either the screen moving around on top of the background, or as the background moving around behind the screen. Because the background loops, no matter how you scroll the background, it will always fill the screen. The window goes on top of the background. The window can move around too, but it doesn't loop. That's good, because if it looped like the background does, then the window would always cover the background. You can't make parts of the window transparent. There's no way to see the parts of the background covered by the window. Since it doesn't loop, when you move the window, it reveals some of the background. Now we can see how the background and window move around independently. The background can move while the window stays still. The window can move while the background stays still. Or they can both move in different ways. We can also see how they combine to create what's shown on screen. The window's location is controlled by two values, window X and window Y. They're a lot like the scroll X and scroll Y values that control background scrolling. If you set window X to 7 and window Y to 0, it puts the top left corner of the window in the top left corner of the screen. If you set window X to 167 or bigger, or window Y to 144 or bigger, the window will be off screen, so you won't see it. You can move the window a little bit to the left but not much, and you can't move it up any more than this. That's annoying, because the window is a 256 by 256 pixel picture. Since it's so big, and since you can't move it any higher than this, it means you can't use it to cover just the top part of the screen. And since you can't move it very much to the left, you can't use it to cover just the left part of the screen. You can only use the window to cover the entire screen, just the right side, just the bottom, or a bottom right corner area. This also means that you can't display this part of the window at all. It's wasted! The reason the window is even as big as it is, with all that wasted space, is that it uses the same tile maps as the background. If you remember, the Game Boy has two tile maps. And this is one reason why. The background and window can use the same tile map, either both tile map 0 or tile map 1, meaning they'll display the same thing. Or they can use different ones. There's a bug in the Game Boy that causes problems if window X is set to 0 or 166. When window X is set to 0, then its horizontal position on the screen gets changed by scroll X. If you set window X to 166, you'd expect it to show just the left one pixel column of the window on the right side of the screen. But the bug makes it so that the top pixel of the window isn't shown at all. In this case, it would be on line 100. And all of line 101 and below are completely filled by the window. And the top line of the screen too. If that weren't bad enough, the horizontal position is also affected by scroll X, just like when window X is zero.
So you got to be careful to avoid these values. The most common use of the window layer is to create a status bar at the bottom of the screen. The window is perfect for this. It can be placed at the bottom of the screen and filled with the needed information. The background can be scrolled around and the window doesn't move. But remember, since the status bar is going to be at the bottom of the screen, its tiles need to be at the top of the window's tile map. That way, window Y can be set so that just the top of the window is visible, and the rest is off screen. As a reminder of how useful tile-based graphics can be, look at how long that progress bar is, but it only uses five tiles. One tile for each end, one tile for a completely full section, one tile for an empty section, and one for a partially filled section. As the bar fills, the partially filled tile fills up. When that tile is full, and it's time to start filling the next tile, the tile map is updated to put a full tile where the partial tile was. Put the partial tile to the next place. And update the partial tile to be one pixel full. That way, the progress bar can be filled to any amount. You can make the status bar with two tile maps one for the background, and one for the window. This lets you scroll the background however you want. Or, if the game doesn't need to scroll up and down very much, you can put everything on the same tile map. It might look a bit weird to you though, since the status bar still needs to be at the top of the tile map, above the actual background content. But, it's going to be rendered at the bottom of the screen. The neat thing is that even though the background and window are using the same tile map, you can scroll the background around while the status bar stays in the same place. You just have to make sure you don't scroll up or down too much, or the background layer will start showing the parts of the tile map that are meant for the window layer. A status bar isn't the only thing you can do with the window layer. You can also use it for other effects like using the window to create an elevator that stays still on screen while the background scrolls to look like the elevator is moving. You have to be a bit careful about what's in the background though. Remember, you can't make parts of the window transparent. The angled edge of the elevator looks fine, as long as there's nothing being drawn to the background around here. If there is, then you see where the window layer boundary is, and it doesn't look very good. The elevator can be moved up and down too, but look here, whoever drew this background foolishly put some support structure here. When the elevator moves up, the window layer hides that detail underneath the elevator. That's pretty silly. The support structure should really be visible above and below the elevator. You can easily fix this with a mid-frame effect, but you'll have to wait for a future video for me to explain that. For now, I'll just draw the support structure on the window layer too. That looks fine, as long as nothing's moving. But if the elevator starts moving again, then the structure below doesn't move, while the one above does. Luckily, I added another tile for the structure below, and I can update it to keep it in sync with the one above. The tile is pretty simple. It just needs to have the height of the horizontal lines changed based on the scroll Y and win Y using some math. If you get your math right, it stays in sync when the background scrolls and when the window moves. Now you can coordinate the background and window movement for different effects. You can make it look like everything is staying still but the camera is moving by moving scroll Y and window Y in the same way. You can make it look like the elevator is moving with the camera following it at the same speed by just changing scroll Y. You can make the elevator move and keep the camera in the same place by just changing window Y. Or you can move the elevator and camera in different ways by changing scroll Y and window Y however you want. You can make the scene more interesting by changing the tile map for the parts of the wall that are off screen as it's moving. For example, you can add in windows at different locations to make it look less repetitive. 
just like with the status bar. You can make the elevator with just one tile map. The window can only be used to show what's on the left side of the tile map. And since the window and background are sharing the same tile map, the background part needs to be on the right side. The elevator can be at most 12 tiles wide so that it can fit into the part of the tile map that isn't being used by the background. Fortunately, that's how I set this scene up. So we just copy over the tile map values and switch the window to use the same map as the background. This gives you the chance to fill the other tile map with something you'll use later. When you get to the top of the building and you're done with the elevator moving, you can put the elevator on the background layer by copying the tile map values to the appropriate places on the tile map being used by the background. Now you can use the window for something else. For example, you could have a huge object moving around on screen, as long as you're okay keeping it on the bottom right. GB Studio Central has an article about using the window for a screen size box that I'll link to in the description. This is useful if you want to scroll through the level, like if you want to have a chase sequence. If you don't need to scroll, and you want some extra freedom of movement from the huge object, then you can switch the roles of the background and window layer. Put all the stuff that you normally have on the background onto the window layer. Now, you can use the background layer for a menacing monster that flies around the screen. Since the monster is on the background layer, you can move it around a lot more. You do have to be careful that it doesn't wrap around, though. Notice that the hideous monster is surrounded by plain black tiles. You'll see this a lot in games that use this technique. Since you're using the background layer for the monster, there's no easy way to have a detailed background image behind the monster. You could do something similar to what I did with the elevator supports, where you have a simple pattern that is updated based on scroll X and scroll Y. But if you want much detail, you'll quickly hit the limits of what the Game Boy can do. It's much simpler to use all black, or any single color, and make it a stylistic choice. Well, that's all I have for now. Don't forget to like...